And how or why did you decide to have a booking system for hair and beauty salons? So, again, I can't give you any logical reasons behind anything, but the, just uh, when, it, when I left Demonware, again, I didn't want to work for someone else, so we had to come up with an idea quickly, and a friend of mine, his girlfriend, had just opened a beauty salon. So we, we still had that text thing going, so we, we said we'll send out text for, to all our customers about offers, and this believe it or not, at the time was, was sort of cutting edge. And we, we sent out the text to like a thousand of our customers and she was packed out the door. Um, and she started doing this sort of every couple of weeks and was doing really well. And other salons started to ring us, go, you know, we want this, can we do this as well? So we're getting all these calls. And, but we realized that, you know, just doing the texting, there wasn't really, we, we, we did, it didn't fit that comfortably with us as well. But we, we also felt that that wasn't really an opportunity in itself. So we decided to, you know, what else could we do for these hair and beauty salons? And it evolved into where we took their appointments and we could send them appointment reminders automatically by text and then also manage their stock and their client records and everything. And it, it just sort of evolved naturally like that. And then the more salons rang us, the more took it, the product got better. And it, and it was kind of an organic process. I was pretty crap at school and I just didn't really like listening to other people uh, telling you what to do. So uh, it's sort of rooted in, in uh, wanting to do your own thing. And it's, it's brilliant at the start, but then you start to, to get staff and, and, and grow a bit. And you, you suddenly realise you've got more responsibility than, than you ever wanted before. Um, and it's a, it's a huge challenge all the time, but the best, the best possible fun. It's a long way from failing your maths to <laughs> employing near 100. You want 115. You're going, your trajectory is way up. When we started off, we did a series. Um, well, I got kicked out of college and I didn't know uh, what I wanted to do. So I said, well, I'll set up a little company to make short films. And uh, the City Enterprise Board helped us out back then. And uh, we all of a sudden found ourselves with uh, a small little studio doing a TV series for RT on PEG. And I didn't know what a VAT number was, let alone, and it was kind of like pick your job description. So I was almost like a, a reluctant entrepreneur. I didn't know that's what I was doing, setting up my own business. Uh, and I had no great business plan or no great vision for it. So, um, so everything, is, everything that, that happened in that stage was making mistakes. And you say, geez, I'm never doing that again. And then you do it again. So, oh, right, I'm definitely never doing that again. And then you do it again. And you know, three or four times making the same mistake later, it kind of becomes instinctual. It's a great series, and the reason I say that is because what we're trying to do is, by the name, as the name suggests, to inspire people to be entrepreneurs. And what I hear time after time is no magic formula, no special qualifications, just passion. Because if you're passionate about it, and again, we've heard today, and we've heard at previous uh, Hot House events, that if you are passionate about a subject, or about a job or about an area that you are willing to work really, really hard. And when you do work really, really hard, you're successful. And when you're successful, well, what are you? You're an entrepreneur. Not working for somebody else is the main driver for most people. And, you know, sort of getting to execute your own ideas is pretty cool. The Be Inspired series was really set up to attract in the students and give them an opportunity to hear from entrepreneurs and to get the message across that they could start businesses and they could start them right now while they're still at college. We have a six-week cycle now which we take applications and process them right through to conclusion as to whether they'll be supported or not. And we would have 15 to 20 applications each time and we would out of that have maybe a dozen or 12 to 14 people that would come through that process and the others then would either be supported by a mentor or told to develop aspects of their idea a little bit further and come back again. So there is a market out there for, uh, and for and entrepreneurship and for startups and for supporting them properly.